Hello, so I thought I would try something that I haven't done before and just record my process for creating a new bubble app from scratch. So kind of like a diary of sorts. So this app is one that solves a problem in my own life, which is always a good starting point for creating applications. And that is a meal planning app. Every week, me and my partner have the same conversation, which is, what are we going to eat this week? And we go on our phones, and we look at random recipes, and we open up the the actual physical cookbook that we have in the house, and and pick out stuff, and you know, grab stuff that we that we've cooked before. And it's just a it's just a repetitive process in my eyes that I think we can we can do a little bit better with. So. Hence comes the idea for an app. And then I discovered this wonderful API, Spoontacular, which has everything that I would need to create this app. It has a massive database of recipes, 5,000 plus recipes. And each of those recipes has like full ingredients lists and you can search by cuisine cuisine you can search by you know the amount of time it takes to prepare the meal you can search by ingredients that you have in your cupboard already that's not necessarily a feature that I'm going to I'm going to create in the in my first version but you can see here in the documentation they have this search recipes endpoint which has um, a whole bunch of search parameters here yeah including stuff like the max ready time which is that's a key one for me because I in mapping out the process, so I'm gonna open up, I'm just experimenting with Fig Jam, Figma's whiteboarding product, in mapping out kind of like, what is the process me and my partner go through right now when we're deciding what to create? And it always starts with, well, I guess how many nights, how many meals do we wanna plan? That's That's part of the discussion. In my mind, maybe not in my partner's, it's also like, how hard do we want these meals to be? For me, I'm looking for, maybe I can cook a hard meal or two, but I'm also thinking, you know, I want to save some time probably during the week and I've got a newborn now in the house. So having meals that are quick and easy to cook is is becoming more important right now. And then dietary constraints. Honestly, probably we would have a mix. We would have a mix of dietary constraints, but if I'm thinking about you know what, we would have maybe some vegetarian meals and we would have some meals with meat during the week, but I would like probably to have the option to just be able to choose to to have a mixture of, of you know, maybe say how much in proportion, maybe like half veggie, half with meat, something like that. And then culinary traditions as well. I could just sort of search through and, and, and pick out what we feel like having that week. And then the idea is that uh, I want to be presented basically with possible meals for that week which is the same press that we go through right now right we're, we're looking at recipes and on a on the internet and going no maybe not that one maybe not that one and literally then just like writing out on a piece of paper what ingredients we would need to make those meals so this is kind of a process of creating an app to help with this process so then the step after inputting all of these search constraints is to have some process of like essentially swiping right on the recipes that we are interested in having that week and swiping left on the ones that we don't and current thinking is i might want to have this actually as a basically like a TikTok style feed so you're scrolling vertically and probably you just click like a like a like button on the ones that we want to at least shortlist for that week maybe i haven't probably haven't mapped out the entire user journey yet and then once we have decided what meals that we want then i just want to have an auto generated ingredient list that's really like the the main output of this app for me right now is just having yeah an ingredient list that just pops right out that i can then take to the supermarket and probably there's going to be a feature after that where i can say what ingredients we already have in the house but i want this to be kind of like as frictionless as possible i don't want this to be like a big laborious process where we're like doing a stock take of everything in our pantry this should augment our existing process it should make it easier not create more work for ourselves i think a lot of apps you know where you track things track health related measures especially uh, to me they're just a lot of work i never want to i never want to do that kind of stuff so it should make things easy and then maybe save favorite recipes as well if i'm thinking about making this a paid 
a paid app, then probably you know there can be you can save recipes to your account, let's say, and you can save a certain amount on a free plan, and then after you exceed your free quota, then you have to pay to to add more to your to your sort of saved recipes list. So that's the general thinking here. You can see this is super basic user journey. Like I've literally just wrote out in bullet points what my search constraints are, and then the main steps here. I have not mapped out any. UI, I have not gone into the details of all of these steps. I just wanted to get kind of initial my initial thoughts and then start kind of prototyping and start to see whether something like this would be possible. That's the next step for me is, yeah, seeing whether it is possible. That's like a really important upfront step. And then after that, I would probably flesh this out a little bit more. But granted, this is an app just for me. Oh, well, it's an app that I am designing and building. So I'm not having to work with other designers or developers. I don't have to create a, a really detailed scope doc. I can have something that you know evolves with me. That's the beauty of, of working in Bubble. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make my notes as best I can in, in Fig Jam. And um, because I can write some of these bullet point texts as well. When I was working at AirDev, this is how we would do all scopes would be for, well, originally in a Google Doc, now it's a Coda Doc. It would be basically a bullet point, bullet points of the functionality of the app. And so the, the hierarchy, the, the nesting of those bullets becomes really important for readability. And that's, I, I like that approach. It really captures the detail on a, on a granular level. There's probably some ways I think, I mean, I at least like to create additional visual references for complex user flows um, or complex you know data flows if you're taking some information from an api and then processing it and then sending some stuff back to the api and then it's maybe you're accessing then a webhook from from the api you know there's this there's this complicated exchanging of information that's happening then that's something that i would want to map out but for something as simple as this this will probably suffice for now and then i would start building so what i've done today has created this. Basically, what all I wanted to figure out was, can I do the search constraints that I want from using the Spooncular API? So I already know that I can get. I did from doing some tests. I know that I can get. Where is it? There's a parameter in here, basically, where I can add. I can tell the API. Well, let me look in my in my API connector. I can tell the API that. All of the parameters here are added within the the URL that I want to add recipe information. There it is. Add recipe information um, equals true. So that when I when I send that through, what I get is I get a nested list of all the ingredients, which is really cool. So for example, this dish here. Oh look, even it's you even get nested um, steps. So uh, yeah, I haven't. I'm only scratching the surface of this API, but I already feel like I'm going to love it. Um, yeah, so there we go. There's a nested list of all the ingredients. So, um, so that's important because that's a really valuable. You know, that's the core output that I'm looking for with this app. And then the other thing that I'm interested in is, can I can I find recipes using these kind of search constraints? And I can. They have this endpoint here, search recipes. I can pass in a cuisine, excellent. I can pass in a diet, excellent. And I already showed you that I can pass in a max ready time. So what I've done, just to quickly prototype this out, obviously um, set up my authentication. This is the only endpoint that I'm using. These are the endpoints that I'm populating dynamically up here. And then on my page, this repeating group here, this is a repeating group that's just showing one entry. That is, let me bring it up. That is simply doing a, a fetching of the results on page load, but I've also tested it with a button click. I've got a button here that's, that's not visible right now, but it's, it's this guy here, which fires a workflow passing in these, these values here. So for each of these um, parameters, so diet and cuisine, easier one, easiest ones to understand, they're being the possible options being populated from an option set. So option sets, we've got cuisine, and then I just added all of the possible cuisines that Spooncular make available to you, supported cuisines. So I've literally just copy pasted those. Same thing for diets. 
And then for difficulty, I'm, I don't, again, I'm going to be creating more work for myself. I'm trying to input like meals under 15 minutes, meals after half an hour. I'm just like easy, you know, decent, reasonable, relatively more involved or like, are we going all out dinner party? I don't even know if I would ever choose, use the app to, to, to do this. I would probably want to be putting in some different information, you know, how many guests are there? How many courses are there? So this isn't really the app to plan a dinner party with. But and anyway, I'm just testing this out. So this is fine. So, and in this case, for these option sets, because Spooncular obviously doesn't understand quick and easy, reasonable, involved. That's my personal vernacular. So I've got a additional field for each of them, which translates, you know, my interpretation and then a time requirement. So I'm looking for meals, which are underneath, I'm going to say, or equal to, oh no, Spoon Taker will interpret that probably as less than, because the maximum time in minutes. So I can pass through a number. If I choose quick and easy here, what I'm actually doing when I click search is of course, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, I'm passing through the time requirement field on that difficulty option that I'm passing in. So that's, you know, that's enough for me. I can see that API, the API gives me what I need. So that's awesome. Next thing that I'm, the, the next kind of like hard thing just to quickly see as possible is that TikTok style scrolling, because this is going to be a mobile app. So for that, I found a very helpful forum thread. thread. I should some, let me... Let me see if I can find it really quickly in my other. Uh, you know what? You know what? you can you can watch me search this. That's fine. It was tick, TikTok swipe, TikTok swipe. You know what? I'm gonna have to just quickly go into my history, and find this. Where are we? Where are we? Here we go. So this does not require a plugin, which um, that drew me to it immediately. It's just simply this very kind soul. Thank you, whoever you are. I'll, I'll leave you a nice little message in this thread. Basically, there's just some real simple JavaScript that we can uh, add to our page and a little bit of hacky assigning or uh, well, getting an invisible button to trigger a workflow and, and having the swipe trigger that button, that invisible button being clicked. Basically, that means that we can get the swiping action. So on my page, that means I can, since I'm in um, mobile mode in, in Chrome inspect tab here, I can scroll up to go to the next item and I can scroll down to go to the previous one. So um, I might wanna do some kind of a bit nicer animation when we're changing from one to the other, but like at least I can see that we can change here. So those are the two kind of important things for my mind to get started with this is can the API do what I need it to do um, in terms of me getting the output that I need? And in terms of the user experience, can I get this kind of um, the scrolling behavior? Everything else is, is par for the course really. So the next steps would be to, um, I'm just gonna basically mock up a real simple UI probably look at a dribble for some inspiration. I've kind of got a bit of a head start. I, I played around with some, so I've got a page here called typography where I was playing around with some fonts. So this is sort of a habit that I've started to do recently, haven't always done this, of just creating a page with some fonts. And um, I was looking around Figma UI kits for a long time and they all did this um, and yeah, I mean, rather than learning how to do all the stuff in Figma, it just kind of makes sense just to quickly do it in Bubble. So just having a nice kind of reference here. I haven't done this for, I'm not gonna kind of design every little element. I'll probably just design as I go. And the other thing that might be worth pointing out is I'm, I'm experimenting with using an option set to, to hold all my kind of app colors so that on a page like this I can um, just kind of see them all and just see whether it works and so I might play around with this method uh, obviously I want to save these all as styles I don't want to be referencing these colors dynamically 
because that just adds that adds overhead in terms of your code size as i understand it bubble will um, have to just generate more css if you are adding local styling properties to your elements rather than using styles so what i mean by that is if i if I try to change some stuff here, then this is basically creating bubble has to store all this extra information, right? About how this particular element should look since I'm changing everything rather than just using a style that it just has to load all the, all those styling settings once and then apply it to that, um, to that element and any other elements really that, that have it. So that's what I've got so far. I've got kind of a color scheme that might change basically i can't even remember exactly how i came up with this i think i started with what w3 color picker so james moore from bill camp sh I, he shared this reference in a tweet and i've um i've started using it since because um, this is really cool because you can basically start with a color and it'll give you all these kind of shades and then i just kind of grab I grab a light, very light shade, a very dark shade, one in the middle, and then split the difference, grab one right there, and then that kind of is enough to just kind of get started. And the other tool that's kind of cool to use, and mind you, I'm, I am not a super um, experienced with, with designing uh, user interfaces, so I'm still figuring out a lot of this stuff. Uh, myself putting some things into practice um, this is a tool that i've used for a few years that is quite cool where you can generate a, a color palette for your app so you just basically click spacebar and then it gives you a new color palette which i think is really cool I, I could actually just use this you know rather than getting fancy and trying to pick my own stuff like i'm all about simplicity it do probably doesn't need to be overthought the color palette as long as it's intentional you're, you're picking colors with intention and then you're using tools like this to kind of outsource the hard work of making sure the different colors work together one kind of cool thing that you can do is if i grab a hex code like this i can actually plug it in over here and then lock it off so i lock this one and then if i click spacebar this one will stay the same and all the rest will auto generate but adapt themselves to the locked colors so you can get i mean that looks pretty pretty nice that's that rare that i picked is very bright i would probably want to dial down the the saturation uh, a bit so you can kind of change there to shl and then yeah dials things down so anyway those are some kind of cool tools that can help with this kind of thing yeah i'll probably record another one of these then when i make some more strides hopefully in the next few days as i mentioned got a newborn in the house so um, I'm figuring this is a nice little project that I can fit around <laughs> the early weeks of, of his life but yeah curious if this has been useful at all happy to share some more information um, if that will help with with your uh, your own applications thanks very much